Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today's meal prep day. Means I get to cook all day. Mike works a job where he goes in early a lot of times. It's hard to make dinner. So we started to meal prep last week where we get the four or five days, whichever amount of days he's working, all done. All ready, ready to go, grab it out of the fridge, heat it up, you're ready to go. So today I'm meal prepping for five days. We are making manicotti, which I will end up making tonight. That's a yummy pasta dish. A stuffed onion and chive cream cheese steak. Um, some chicken breast. Steak fajitas. S steak skewers. And then I'll be making some asparagus, mixed veggies, and green beans for the sides. I'm making those mostly on the smoker. There's a couple things being done in the house. Last week, a lot of people said, well, where's the video? Did you make a video? We'd like to see a video. So, I guess you're getting a video this week. So, stay tuned. You're going to see all of it getting prepped in one video. And if you're new here, be sure to hit that like, share, subscribe, leave us a comment, ring that bell so you don't miss any of the notifications. That's a lot to do, isn't there? Biggest thing, hit that subscribe and ring that bell. I really do appreciate it. And let's get cooking. First dish to go on the smoker. And I'm going to do some honey garlic chicken. Um, very simple. I'm just using regular old honey. Putting that all over the chicken. Nice sticky honey. This is something I've never done before. Something new I'm trying. It sounds really good. Something different. So we're going to do some honey garlic. I'm not going to touch it because this is going to be sticky as can be. But throw some honey over the top. And I was trying to find my minced garlic, but I couldn't find it. So we got some garlic powder instead. So we're going to do some garlic powder over the top of that. Honey garlic seasoning tastes good when you just buy regular seasoning. I don't have any more of that left. Otherwise, I'd use that too just because it's already pre-mixed. And then we've got... I've got to get it. i got to get it. Some garlic cloves. i got to peel those. But I'm going to put a couple garlic cloves in there so the extra garlic taste goes into it. And then we'll put that on the smoker. That'll be ready. We're keeping the temperature around that 225 like I was last week. Um, I did a video last week so you guys didn't know that. But 225 is what I keep it at. Um, chicken typically takes somewhere around 6 hours to cook when it's on the breast. So that's relatively fast. Um, so that's going to go on there for about six hours. Veggies take about four to five hours, longer than you would expect veggies to take. And steak will take about six hours. Most of the stuff will take around that six hour mark. So we're going to not have it all going on at the same exact time. It's going to be staggered because of the fact that I had to prep it all. But we got to keep track of what time it all goes on. And it'll be about six hours at that 225. So not too horrible. But I'm going to finish prepping up this chicken and wrap it up. I'll come back when we get to the next dish. The dish two, which is going to be the onion and chive cream cheese stuffed steak, which is a round steak, just a thin eye of round, wrapped in bacon. And then you top it with seasoned salt. Very simple. I've done this on the channel before. You guys have probably seen it, but you got your round steak. You got your onion and chive cream cheese. You could use a different type of cream cheese. You could also use a different, you could put like onions in there. I've done that before as well where you stuff some onions inside. Um, that tastes good. Or you just do the cream cheese but you spread some cream cheese over the top. You roll it on up. Sorry my hand's gonna not show you the rolling process but you should know what I'm doing. And then you take your piece of bacon and wrap it. These are kind of smaller steaks than I normally end up getting. So, you wrap it on up. Um, once all done, I'll put the seasoned salt over all of it. But the steak is really good, really tender, tastes amazing. Um, it's one of my regulars I make. I've made it both in the oven, in the pressure cooker, and in the smoker. So, it works in all ways. I'm doing it on the smoker today. But the pressure cooker, it comes out very tender. The biggest draw is in the oven, the bacon does come out a little crispier than some of the other ways. I use the, um, the 
boil broiling dish when I do that because then it drains the grease off. This way you got the grease that's sitting inside there, but it still comes out very good. The bacon falls apart. It's just not crispy. Um, actually, this is the video I made where the steak turned to chicken at the end. Nikki Pink pointed that out. She goes, uh, your steak turned to chicken. I was the whole time steak, 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 and at the very end I go, that chicken looks amazing, doesn't it? Blonde moment, apparently. <laughs> Just some old uh, seasons out there. You go now. You can see it. I was hidden stuff. Sprinkle that over the top. That really does make or break it. You really need that seasoned salt. It helps. And then that is done. I'm gonna finish prepping this one, and we'll come back on the next prep. To the next thing we're prepping, which is going to be the asparagus. I'm actually wrapping most of them, maybe not all of them, in bacon. Um, actually never done this before this is new I see everyone do it and it looks so good and I'm gonna do that just to make it hopefully taste that a little bit better but I'm gonna wrap them I've got like half pieces of bacon once I run out of that half pieces that's all that's gonna get wrapped just because I do have to have bacon for the green beans as well and I should have probably bought three packages of bacon but I didn't I thought two would be more than enough, but apparently I could have gone a little bit more, but oh well, it's all good. It's all good. So probably, I'm going to guess, because most veggies are taking six hours, take about six hours, I'm going to add a little bit of olive oil into the package um, while it's cooking, and I'll probably sprinkle a little bit of something on it. I don't know what yet. Maybe some garlic. I don't know. Since I've never had this before, I don't know if I should sprinkle anything on it. Maybe I'll just leave it as is. Maybe I'll just leave it as is. But I've ate it before. Just never made it before. I'm not doing all of them in bacon because I just don't have enough bacon. Dang bacon. But I'll do some of them in bacon and some of them won't be in bacon. Let's look at that bacon grease. Probably not the healthiest option of making these, but they're still very good. So, we'll make these up, and then we'll be on to the next step. This is pretty straightforward, like I said. It's just wrapping them up in bacon. There's the unwrapped. And then we'll throw the wrapped ones on top of that. And then, like I said, we're going to use a little bit of olive oil. Bit of olive oil into the package. Now we're going to wrap that on up and that one's ready to go on the smoker. Got all the vegetables cut up so I did all that off the camera. Um, for the tacos I got two packages because we love this stuff. I buy this carne piccata for the tacos. Um, I got two packages so it's about four, four and a half pounds of taco meat. It's steak, ta or not tacos, for fajitas. I do this for tacos as well, so don't mind me. I'm saying tacos, I mean fajitas. But there's the first package. And then you gotta do the second package. And then I got a whole big bowl of veggies. Yummy, yummy. We are trying to eat healthier, guys, so you're getting a lot of vegetable based meals. But there's our meat. I love this meat for tacos and fajitas. It's perfect. Bowl of veggies, which is mixed bell peppers. There's onions at the bottom. There's some garlic. And then there's also tomatoes. All that goes in this mixture. This is going to be a big package. This is something that Mike will eat. I will eat. The kids will well, me and Mike especially will eat it later, so it's something I don't mind making extra of. The kids usually eat this as well, very well, so not bad. We do have some fajita mix that I have to put over it. Cormac fajita mix. I got two packages because of how much there is. Um, dump that over it. Most of the flavor, when it's on the smoker, honestly, is going to be that smoke flavor. I'm using hickory hickory wood. Most of the flavor is going to come out as hickory. You're going to get a lot of hickory taste. 
I'm not really worried about this mixing in because once it seeps in and sits, it's going to mix in, but I'm going to kind of... I'm losing, I'm losing veggies. And then I'm going to throw a little bit of oil over this just to help with the cooking process. Um, since there are veggies in there, I keep losing veggies the more I split them up. I got to wash my hands before I do the oil. Actually, we're just going to do the oil. We'll wash the bottle. So we're just going to put a little bit of oil into it. Olive oil again, like I've been saying. It's the only oil we really use in the house anymore. Um, a little bit healthier than some of the other options. Now, we're just, now the veggies, I've already cut them up as well. I've got them marinating in just some zesty Italian dressing. Something simple. Add a little bit of flavor to them. A little bit different from last week. But I have on, red onions, mixed bell peppers, um, garlic, tomatoes, broccoli, and uh, asparagus. So that is the veggies. Um, this is the last of our smoker stuff. Now with the skewers, you always want to soak the skewers overnight. I soak them overnight. That helps keep them from burning, splintering, all that stuff. So those are our skewers. I'm gonna put those right there. Now with the kids, they don't really eat the veggies so much on these. So I tend to make some that are just all meat and some that have meat and veggie mixture and some that have mushrooms because I like mushrooms, but no one else does in this house. Um, I've just got stew meat. I've been marinating that and as well in Italian dressing. I'm making this one as a straight all meat one. I usually make two to three all meat ones for the kids. Um, it's easier than trying to pull all the veggies off and make up their plates and then I end up with a ton of veggies and next to no meat even though that's what I've been eating lately anyway so I usually make a couple that are just all meat and that's what I eat. so trying to get the kids to eat more vegetables but they aren't going to eat some of the, like we give them a plate with veggies on it but why waste the whole skewer basically so there's our meat skewer now the other skewers will get some mixed bell peppers and some red onions on it. And like I said, I do have mushrooms for mine. There's the mushrooms. So we do have some variety I make in this. They'll all get cooked together. A little bit more meat than that because that's a little tiny piece of meat. There's our meat. Then we're going to throw on some... Pepper. Pepper. And then there's the onion. Don't, don't, because you will drop that and the dog will eat it. Don't touch that food. Don't get on that chair. Why? Because I don't need you knocking the stuff over. Put a couple peppers on there. My son's trying to move my food that I still have to put on the smoker. I put it off to the side on a chair so it's out of my way. And he's over here trying to move it. And that stuff, if you touch it wrong, it's going to fall. And then goodbye prep. Goodbye a lot of money that was already spent on that prep. So don't touch my food. Bacon. Skewers are always yummy though. These taste amazing. Um, you can do any seasoning you really want. I've done teriyaki before. I'm doing the Italian this time. Again, the smoker is going to take most of the scent. Or scent. Most of the taste. You also smell it. You'll also smell it. Um, the smoke definitely has a distinct smell to it. Every time I do the smoking foo uh, food, everyone always makes comments. They're like, you smell so good. Don't fling rubber bands. This child lost his mind. No. He has lost his mind. But there's another pretty skewer. What did I just say? Uh, I said don't fling, fling rubber bands. Uh, you said do. Troy, what did I just say? Well, put the rubber band down. 
Let me go wash these. Okay, on to the next skewer. We're going to make a mushroom skewer so you can see that one. Yummy. I love mushrooms. I love them. So essentially this is my skewer. A mushroom. Some paper. And some onion. Onion on there. Huh? Talking to myself, talking to the camera. <laughs> but there's the three different skewers. I didn't bring you out as I put each individual item out on the smoker. So this is just a sneak peek at how full the smoker is. Um, temperature is running us right around 150. I had it up about 200, so it's dropping down a little bit. You can see all that smoke billowing out. It smells amazing. Now, when you open this, there's going to be a billow. Billow of smoke, but you see how it looks. I got all the meat at the bottom. These are the vegetables that are on the smoker. This is the steak. The steak's almost done. The steak is almost done. Um, we're nearing the end of even, like, the asparagus. Nice thing with smokers, guys. This is 150 degrees, as you can see, and not hot to the touch. I can touch it. Um, we're going to get these things done, though, try to get things moved around. This is vegetables up here that's going to take a little bit longer. The temperature needs to get raised up some um, because of how much I have in there. Some of this might be on there a little longer than it normally would cook. All that would roughly take about six hours. The veggies, about four to, four to five um, they're probably going to be on there a little longer today because of how full I made this smoker. But when you're prepping for five days of meals, this is what you get. This is what you get. It's going to be full. Guys, I will show you as it comes off, show you what it looks like. Um, tried to show you the prep of each individual item. Obviously, when I do an individual video of this item being cooked, one item being cooked, you get a little bit more in depth. Let me know what you think about this. Let me know if you like this style of video, because normally I was doing one meal at a time. You saw the whole preparation. It's harder to do with this. It's going to be choppy. It's going to be cut up. You're going to have multiple meals in one video. But I'm thinking of starting up a new series of our weekly meal prep. Since I'm doing this on a weekly basis, I'm thinking about doing a weekly meal prep. So let me know if you like it. Let me know if you'd like to see more of these weekly meal preps. Because I will gladly do it. We'll start videoing every week when I make the meal prep. You might have some of the same meals getting done. But it might give you some ideas. And you just see all the work that gets involved in a meal prep. Let me know what you think. Okay, the first of three things are off the smoker. This is that honey garlic chicken. Looks pretty good. My hand, I'm just going to show you. Like, you see how tender it is. It goes right through. I'm just taking it out of the foil, transferring it into a container. This is how we're going to store it for the week um, until we decide it's time to eat it. Um, this chicken looks really good. It looks really, really good. And you can definitely taste the honey. Like I said, this is the first time I've ever made this. And it's pretty good. I just tried a little piece of it. It is pretty good. So that is the honey garlic chicken. Landon, please. That's going to get a lid put on it for the fridge. Now we've got our asparagus, which I'm hoping will fit in this container because we don't need a huge container for that. Oh, no, this is not the asparagus. This is our steak that we're actually going to end up eating tonight. Um, let me find something to put it in. Let me find something. Hi, guys. We will use this even though we are going to be eating this steak tonight. Um, this is the onion and chive cream cheese stuffed steak with bacon around it. 
that looks good yeah. that looks good really um nice. like i said when you make it like this it does not brown up as much Troy. the steak does not brown up as much i'm just gonna leave that in the foil since we are gonna be cook eating that tonight i'm just gonna leave it in the foil cool. now i'm hoping the asparagus will fit in here this is the asparagus and reveal the treasure within Ooh. Yummy. That looks amazing as well. I'm going to try to put it all into this container. Not sure how well that's going to work. I don't mind if they break when I put them in, though, so that's not a big deal. Try to put the juices in there, too, just so it's not sitting without juice. The juices may help keep it from getting... Tough. They are very tender. Can't get it out. I was trying not to have to use my hands on it, but we're just going to use our hands because that's the easiest way to get this all out. Now we got a little bit more of the asparagus to get out. That looks amazing. Well, half of the food is done off the smoker now. This is the first half, but that looks amazing. Not as pretty in presentation as it was two seconds ago. But Okay, we are on to, I believe it's the seventh dish, the seventh prep on this prep of the week. What I'm making are green beans. They're on the stove. I had to split it into two pots. You can kind of see the second pot right here because there's just too much. There's four pounds of beans in there. There's a half a package of bacon sliced up. And then this right here is onions. They're frozen, they're pre-cut and then frozen. So those will get cooked up in there once they defrost. What I do is I have it on a medium heat. You are gonna stir it and stuff, but I've got my lid that is just gonna kinda go over to help trap the steam in. There is also olive oil in there as the oil. Just let them steam basically. They're steaming and cooking at the same time. Mix them up as they go. It's going to shrink down. This is one of our favorites, favorite veggies in the house. But that's our seventh of eight dishes for our week of prep. We'll be back when they get closer to done. Okay, okay. It's time to reveal the last bit. The last stuff that was on the smoker. Next up is going to be our shish kebabs. How yummy is that? Uh, hold on that tin foil so you can see it. Ooh, that looks amazing. You can't see it very well on the camera yet. Shish kebabs are looking amazing. It's getting darker, so my lighting isn't as good. It's hard for you to see it when I got the shadows of the tin foil. But there we have it. Shish kebab. That stuff looks absolutely amazing. Look at that. Look at that. Yummy. And there's the full meat ones. Like I said, for the kids. And here's one with the mushrooms. Ooh, look at those mushrooms. They look like they were cooked to perfection. I even have one in here that's all mushrooms. I'm trying to find it. I did an all mushroom, there we go, an all mushroom shish kebab for myself. How awesome is that? Mixed veggies. Those mixed veggies, like I said, had dressing on them. We're going to pour those in to here. Woo! They look amazing. Smell amazing. Voila! Look at that! Look at those amazing looking mixed vegetables. Those just look spectacular. Want the bowl to fall as I dump tacos in or fajitas. I keep wanting to call it tacos. It's the fajitas. Not the tacos. Not the same difference either because you got extras and fajitas. Oh, we got a 
there we go. Time for that reveal. Woo I almost lost it. That would be a very bad day. All that work to lose it to the dogs. That'd be a bad day. But I didn't lose it. I saved it. And now my hands are filthy. Tell me that doesn't look amazing. We are making the last dish of the prep for the week, which was the stuffed manicotti. I'm doing sausage stuffed manicotti. I've already got the co noodles cooked. You cook them. I don't like cooking them until they're like really, really soft. I like leaving them a little bit, um, a little bit firmer just because they're gonna cook up as I heat them up in the oven after everything's said and done. But I've got two pounds of sauce, ground sausage and these are those frozen onions again, the pre-chopped ones I've already got. Got those out of the dumpster, chopped them up and froze them so that I could use them in recipes like this. So you're going to brown that all up. Um, you could add bell pepper into that as well. Um, I don't have any left. I used it all in all the recipes yesterday. So I don't have any left. I apparently forgot a piece of paper. But I don't have any more bell pepper left, so I don't have any bell pepper to add into this. But I do have the onion. Um, I gotta find the minced garlic too. You also would put some garlic in there, so I'm gonna put some minced garlic in, but I gotta chop that up. Forgot to do that before I started the camera. But I'm gonna brown all that up, and then I'll come back when we get to the next step of what we add into it to make the mixture that's gonna go inside the noodles. See you in a little bit. Okay, so now that the sausage is all browned up, we would do two tablespoons of flour. So two tablespoons of flour. Mine's more of an estimate because I couldn't find my tablespoon. And two cups of milk. You do two cups of milk, then you're going to stir all this up and heat it up again. Makes a white sauce for the noodles. Well, for this, this mixture, I guess you could say. That's after you drain the fat from the sausage as well, guys. <laughs> but we're going to go ahead and mix that up. Heat it up. And let it thicken up, because this will thicken up into like a nice cream instead of being milky. So we're gonna go ahead and turn it back on. And once that's all done, we're going to stuff the manicotti noodles. Now for me, I don't like stuffing them as whole noodles. It's just too much of a pain. So I like splitting the noodle, filling the noodle, and then just rewrapping it. That's how I do it. But we'll be getting to that step next. We're at the stuff in the noodles point. I like to put the, some sauce at the very bottom. I'm using some ragu. But I'll put a little bit of sauce at the bottom of the pan. Just to put something there. Helps coat the bottom of the noodle as well. I don't really care if it gets in that, that, because it's going on the noodles anyway. So I'll put a little bit more in there. Once done with that, like I said, I like opening the noodles. It just makes life easier. Trying to keep them closed, it's, yeah, all fine and dandy, but it's just a pain to try to stuff it. And then you just spoon in some of this mixture. I might end up using that spatula instead because I'm going to make a mess with just a spoon, I think. But you spoon in a decent amount and you close up that noodle.
it's great if you can spoon it in directly, but like say, there's our noodle. I'm gonna try to spoon it in directly. It's a pain. You got. It's just a big pain in the butt to do. To get it all into that noodle, and this one's got a split in it anyway. I'm gonna use the spatula. So our, our order is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. A serving is one noodle by sense. So there's actually nine servings in there. Um, I'm going to spoon with leftover of this mix over the noodles. I always end up with a little bit extra. That's all the mixture. And then we got the sauce. We'll go over the top. I usually use two jars because I don't like lightly sauced noodles. So I usually use two jars on my noodles. Um, I don't think I need quite two, but I need at least one and a half on this because there's just not enough over the top. Not for our family, at least. So we got all the sauce over it. And then I throw some cheese over the top. There's many different ways of making stuff, man. Some people use ricotta cheese as the stuffing. Um, or mix that in with the stuff. So you can do ricotta cheese as well. This is the way I make mine. I'm going to put a little bit more cheese over it. We've been trying to be healthier, but this is going to be one of our unhealthy dishes, I guess, for this week is the manicotti. Sometimes you just, you got to splurge, right? But now that's going to go inside the oven at about 300 degrees for about 20 minutes to melt that cheese, heat everything through, and then it's ready to serve. Okay, there you have it, guys, the finished product of the manicotti after it's been heated up. We're going to grab a plate and dish out a chunk of manicotti. So we got... That this should be about one noodle here. That looks delicious. And there you have it, guys. That is the finished product of the manicotti. It is amazing. Sorry about the lighting. The lighting is kind of bad in my kitchen, especially once it gets nighttime. But that is the final dish of our prep week. Well, guys, this week's meal prep is done. Hope you liked the video. Let me know if you like this. I know normally I would do one meal at a time, but since I'm doing this meal prepping, I'm prepping four, five, six, seven things at once. A lot of it's getting done on the smoker. Do you want to keep seeing this series? Do you want me to keep on putting the videos out there of the meal prep weekly? I'll be doing this every week. It might be some of the same dishes at times, some small changes, but did you like it? Do you want to see more? If you're new here, don't forget to hit that subscribe, ring that bell so you don't miss our uploads, and we'll catch you on the next one.